Hey guys, Jay! Welcome back to the channel. So guys, the 1027 event has completed, and I gotta tell you, for G.I. Joe, there really was only one character revealed as a pre-order, and I am actually really excited about this figure. However, the pre-order details are kind of leaving me a little bit concerned. Nemesis Immortal goes up for pre-order tomorrow, and I wanted to give you guys the full details about that because it's really important that you try and get this pre-order in as soon as possible. Let's take a deep dive into this and see exactly what was announced at 1027, as this one is one you don't want to miss out on. Let's have a look. All right, guys, 1027 has come and gone, and we got something big announced for G.I. Joe. This one is a bit of a bittersweet moment because there are a couple things I wanted to touch up on this. These photos come courtesy of our good friends over at HisTank.com. They're a great news resource for G.I. Joe news all year round. Give them a like and a follow and tell them that Jay sent you. That's right, guys. Nemesis Immortal, Nemesis Enforcer, has finally been announced for pre-order. And I really wanted to go over this because there's a bunch of things I'm really excited about, but at the same time, I'm kind of disappointed on other things. Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. So here we go. Of course, it was Emily and Lenny who were able to show us this brand new drop for G.I. Joe. That's right, guys. Nemesis Immortal was finally revealed as a pre-order exclusive on HasbroPulse.com. And that bugs the hell out of me. This is just kind of ridiculous in my opinion. I mean... Nemesis Immortal, Nemesis Enforcer, is one of the most popular characters from the Cobra Law faction. And I gotta tell you, I think a lot of people were expecting that this guy would be able to be ordered in multiple fan channels as well as retail locations, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Looking at the character himself, he looks freaking awesome. I mean, is he the exact same character that we got in the cartoon? No. Is he a take of a modern version of Nemesis Enforcer? Yes, absolutely 100%. There are a lot of people who are a little bit critical about the wings and how they look compared to the way they are supposed to look from the cartoon. But in all honesty, it doesn't look nearly as bad as some characters who have been released with wings. These ones actually look really neat. And honestly, they are more bat-like. And I don't really mind that at all. But the overall look from Nemesis Enforcer, Nemesis Immortal is pretty damn good. He's absolutely massive. I do believe he actually towers over characters like Serpentor and, of course, Sergeant Slaughter. And with, I mean, rightly so. The guy is literally a force of nature. I mean, he's absolutely huge. He looks impressive. And the attachments for the wings on the back were sort of starting to get into the idea that there might be some hints about or more cartoon aesthetic versions of G.I. Joe Classified. At New York Comic Con, they revealed that Snake Eyes will be getting a Polar Bear edition very much from the very first season of G.I. Joe. And that is exciting in and of itself. So I do expect that there probably will be maybe studio series types of G.I. Joe. Who knows? We might actually start seeing G.I. Joes of that nature. At least it's a possibility. Nemesis Immortal here looks pretty damn cool. He is not the Nemesis Enforcer that we're used to, or maybe even expecting in the way he looks overall. Zooming in closer, we can actually see that he does have pretty much all the telltale signs of a great figure. He's got wonderful articulation all over the place. I really do appreciate the way they've married a lot of the different ideas of Nemesis Immortal, Nemesis Enforcer, from comic books and different appearances that he's made in different types of media. He has these two new thigh holsters, which are specifically for his swords, and I believe it was Lenny who said that that was a wonderful addition based on the idea of the pouches on his legs were from the original vintage character, which really, as a kid, he could never figure out what they were for. The wings are, as we said earlier, a completely different departure from the original versions of Nemesis Enforcer. But these ones look very much more like bat wings. As a matter of fact, they have extensions almost as if there are another set of arms on Nemesis Immortal. This might not sit well with too many fans, but I have to admit that they are pretty cool looking in and of themselves. Everything else about Nemesis Immortal looks pretty close to Nemesis Enforcer. The hood that he's wearing is pretty much spot on with what he appeared like in the G.I. Joe cartoon. His neckline also has a very similar appearance to that overall look. 
even the color on his suit looks very, very similar. He even has that diamond-shaped symbol that's in his chest. They never really explained what that was, but it's always been something of an icon. I wonder if they'll finally divulge what it actually is. Is it some sort of control unit? Is it some sort of unique symbol? And does it have any special meaning to Nemesis Enforcer? I guess we'll find out. Everything else about this figure is pretty much spot on to the cartoon. He even has his guyver like forearm spikes which he utilized very much in the cartoon zooming out we can even see the tentacles which were very much inspired by the vintage toy for those of you who remember instead of having wings he actually had these tendrils and they still look as disgusting now as they did back then he also comes with additional set of hands a new head sculpt which i believe is more reminiscent of the actual comic book and he even has these two swords, which are brand new to the character. I don't think they've ever been showcased before, but are wonderful additions to the figure. It's interesting to see that the second version of his head has these bony protrusions, almost like a mohawk coming straight down the middle of his head, and these other wonderful ornate features that come across on the sides of his head as well as the back of his head. The wings themselves are actually on this attachment, which has its own set of articulation points, allowing the wings to spread out as far as they can, up, down, and retract, which is a lot of fun. Focusing a little bit more on the tendrils themselves, they are malleable as they have a wire inside of them, so you can actually position them in any direction possible. Looking at the alternative version of Nemesis Immortal's head, it really does look very, very striking. As a matter of fact, it has more whited eyes and gives him a completely different look compared to his winged version. I was never really a big fan of the toy, so this one is actually not my preferred way of looking or displaying Emesis Immortal, but I do have to admit it's a wonderful addition to the character and really harkens back to the original vintage collection. Taking a little bit of closer detail on the face, I do have to admit it is a wonderful addition to the character and I really do appreciate the fact that they did include a secondary head. As we are able to zoom in closer to thanks to these wonderful shots during the event, you can see a lot of great detail in Nemesis Immortal, and I really am excited to be able to get this character into our collections this soon. But there is the issue in and of itself, as it was revealed that this figure himself will be a Hasbro Pulse exclusive. And that to me is something I'm just a little bit disappointed in. As such a popular character as this, who admittedly has had its detractors in the past, and it'll be interesting to see how popular this version of Nemesis Immortal, Nemesis Enforcer, will actually be. As a matter of fact, pre-orders go up today, Monday, October 28th, 2024, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Hasbro Premium Plus members, and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for all other fans. My fear right now is that because of the controversy surrounding this particular figure, as there are many detractors for the Cobra Law faction, Hasbro themselves might be short shipping this particular figure in lieu of that overall controversy, and that really scares me as I hope that this exclusive figure on Hasbro Pulse will not sell out too quickly for anyone who hopes to be able to grab him. I wanted to let everybody know exactly what was going on with this character as this might be one of very few chances to be able to get this character. As we do know in the past, if a character sells out rather quickly and is popular enough, they will reissue figures multiple times on Hasbro Pulse. The problem with that, they're very scarce on the overall details of the release and oftentimes they're posted without warning and people just are not ready to order at the drop of a hat. So tomorrow might be a good time to try and get this figure on the first go around. So set your alarm clocks, everybody. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Hasbro Pulse Premium members and 2 p.m. for all other fans. The Nemesis Immortal Drop on 1027's Premium Pulse event is definitely a welcome inclusion into the line, but I have to tell you, I am not too thrilled at the overall premise of a exclusive figure being given only one day to pre-order this guy as I do fear that he may not last until the end of the day for pre-orders, and I hope everyone will be able to get this guy if they want him into their collection. Get ready, everybody, because this one is definitely a figure which is going to be sought after, and you don't want to be caught sleeping on this particular pre-order, because once he's done, we might not see him for a very long time. Guys, this is crazy, so... Don't forget, mark down your calendars 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Premium Plus members and 2 p.m. for everybody else. And I'm really concerned because many of these exclusive figures have sold out even before they go and become available for the general public, being pretty much what a lot of people are calling 
premium plus exclusives. Like literally, people who have premium plus memberships are the only ones who actually get this. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case with Nemesis Mortal, but I got to tell you, it's definitely one of those situations where you really have to to roll the dice on this one. Uh, do you get a Premier Plus membership just to get Nemesis Immortal? Or do you actually roll the dice and hope that you might actually be able to pick him up on the regular release at 2 p.m., knowing that, well, there aren't that many left over after the Premier Plus members actually had their fill? Do you have a Premier Plus membership and are not completely worried about this overall pre order, considering the fact that you've already got your Premier Plus membership? Or. Are you not a Premium Plus member and are just crossing your fingers and hoping that this is something you'll be able to get when 2 o'clock hits and maybe there'll be enough stock for everybody? Or could you care less about the Cobra Law faction and actually don't really care one way or the other if this actually goes through or not? Let me know those comments in the comment section below, guys. 1027 was an amazing event and I really am excited about some of the releases that were dropped that day. As a matter of fact, I'm going to post up another video talking specifically about the Studio Series for Transformers as there's a whole combiner set, which has really got my attention. I'll have that video linked right here, guys, and you can definitely check it out. I'll see you guys there. I hope you're all doing well, staying safe, and as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Good journey. Keep proud.